Hey guys, it's Yvette and I am back with week three for the mini series uh, So Along that Allison Glass and Juicy Juice are hosting for us. Um, so what I'm doing is I am just sort of giving a video tutorial on how to do these foundation paper piecing patterns and these are really great for beginners so if you're taking a look at it and you're thinking oh my goodness those pieces are so small there's no way i could possibly do this um that's totally not true these first two that we've already completed um are very simple and they teach you how to do foundation paper piecing in a very methodical, repetitive way, which makes it so much easier uh, to learn how to do it. And so as we go through, you're going to see that the patterns will get a little bit more intricate and will lead us to a place where we'll be able to expand uh, how we're doing the paper piecing. And so I think if you um, follow along, you're going to have a great time and you'll also learn how to do this very awesome uh, technique. So uh, as you can see, we had the log cabin first and then we did the courthouse step. And this week we are doing the pineapple. And I've started on a pineapple using canning day uh, by Corey Yoder and what I can tell you about this particular one um, is that personally I thought that these two went pretty quick like it was easy for me to kind of get into a groove and get them done quickly um, this one's a little bit different and you're going to find that it's going to take a little more time um, it's gorgeous as it's coming through but what will happen is you have a lot more cuts to make and a lot more um, stitching to do because now you're going to have four pieces of each like around instead of the two. So it's sort of like double. Um, it's not harder. It's just a, more um, piecing and cutting. Okay. So I have already taken the pattern out and I made a copy um, so that I would not make a you know cut my uh my pattern i want to keep that to do it over and over and over later um so what i always do after i make the copy is i'm going to cut it down to be more like where i'm going to finish at except i leave probably you know way too much of the of extra but i'm thinking that i'm not sure what i'm going to be making with it at the end so i'm leaving kind of a bit of extra um especially like you know i i'm going instead of like a quarter inch i mean this is like an inch see that i'm leaving and i just did that so that later on whenever i'm making something else i'll have plenty to add on okay so Let's get started with this. I'm going to move these out of the way just so that um, I don't accidentally cut anything. And I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I know that I want to use the, I think it's, is it 10? Let's see, one, two. Well, I'll, I'll let you see what I'm doing. I'm just counting the colors that I've already used. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 colors. So I know that I'm going to go 10 colors out, um, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so they have theirs going a little bit bigger. And the thing is, is I want, I just made the decision that as I'm making mine, I want them to be pretty uniform in the end. So it's like I want to use these same colors and end on the same color. So my actual pineapple might be a little bit smaller than even say this one by the time I'm done. I'm really not sure. Um, but it's going to be all uniform and that's my goal. And so you make a decision with yours how big you want it to be. And this is another thing that I really like about these patterns is that... Thanks, Jelly Bean. That was awesome. Okay. Is that <laughs> he keeps moving my cutting mat. Um is that you can go all the way out like to this big and just make something super awesome. And in one day, you know, not for not for this one in particular, um, 
this sew along but I want to make like the bigger ones I think because it just looks so dramatic and I would love to like I want to make like a big old pillow with it or something I don't know I'm gonna <laughs> we'll have to see how it goes you know someday whenever I have all that extra time um but I, I really like that about these patterns they're very versatile so let's get going I am going to trim down my paper and I mean, I think that I'm probably ending it somewhere like around there, but I'm going to go out a little bit more. And the reason why I cut down is because the smaller the piece of paper you have to work with, the better. Um, because it just in the beginning, especially when you're working in the center here, it can get a little awkward when you're trying to hold your fabric in the back and the pe you know, the paper is so big. Um, so if I don't need all that paper, I'm going to trim it off because it just makes it easier to work with. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm probably going to, um, let's see, I'm, I'm doing my canning day one right now. And what am I at? Went to like 32. So I think I, I ended up cutting it like here for my canning day one that I'm in the middle of uh, working on. I kind of got a head start so that I can, you know, be a little practiced in what we were doing here before I got started. And let's see. I guess I could do the same size. I know it's not going to be as big as the canning day one. And we're already kind of, okay. So I can probably, oh geez. It's always better, of course, to be bigger than, than too small because then, um, because you can cut it down, but I don't want to be too big because then it also makes it smaller for, okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut it about here. Um, and really just, you know, as long as you don't cut it too small, um, I wouldn't worry too much. Just cut it down so that you don't have to work with that giant piece of paper. That's all. Let's see. Okay. Now that I have my piece cut down, um, I'm just gonna go over real quick the basics of foundation paper piecing. The good thing to, or the thing to remember is that this side is the side that you're gonna sew on. So when you're over at your sewing machine, you're gonna be sewing on these lines. Okay, which means that this part that you're seeing here, this is the back of your project. So anytime that you're sewing, um, let me see if I can, well, if you can see, here's the side that I had already sewed on for this guy, right? And so this part, this is the part that you don't even see whenever you are sewing. So your pretty side is on the back and you're actually using all of these lines to direct where your pa your pieces are being attached. So that's what makes these lovely sharp lines in your project, okay? So as long as you remember that this is the side, like say the back side of any project you ever do. This is the back side. And just remember that this part, when it's finished, should look really pretty like this, right? And nobody will see that part. Okay, all that to say, what you're when you're going to be sewing on your pieces with um, a pattern on it. That's why when I say you hold the pretty side to you, it's because this is what you're looking at. So you definitely want the pretty side to be toward you right now because once you sew a line down, you're going to then flip it over and that's the part you see. So you want this side to ultimately be facing this way. Okay, and I'm going to say that so many times over and over and over that it's going to really drill it into your head and um, 
really enforce what you're supposed to be thinking about when you're doing your foundation paper piecing. And just remember that these patterns are really not hard. You just need to make sure that you're that you're that you're in the game, right? So you're constantly thinking about what you're doing. And it's really easy when you flip it over and you see where you're going on the pretty side that you know, okay, I know what I'm doing now because it's all very methodical and um, and it's all very uniform. Okay, so let's get started. I'm excited. This one's actually a lot of fun. Okay, so if we keep our piece here that we're looking at, um, now of course Juicy Juice has put... Um, this piece of white in the middle and I'm going to sort of stick with <laughs> that I'm going to keep this instead of white I'm going to make this my background color now you can make a decision what you want to do it's totally your piece so just um if you're going to put these pieces together in any way um I would just keep it uniform in however you're going to do it okay so obviously our number one and the one is pretty now like that um so when you're looking at your number one that's going to be your background and everything going out to the right and left and the top and bottom are also going to be background okay so if you remember when we were doing the first two it was always that we would have one and one and then one and one right so you'd have like four things going on well now we've got um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I wanted to say eight, but I'm like, if I say the wrong thing, I'm going to feel like an idiot. Um, so you're doing uh, eight going around now. So now you're doing four and four. Okay. And that's what I was talking about when I said it takes just a little bit more time with this one. Um, but I can tell you that with the Canning Day one, it's coming along really good and it looks really nice. I mean, you can look at this and see just how gorgeous that is. So, um, all right. So I'm going to cut my fabric. And I am using this gray or silver, I like to call it. Um, so for that middle piece, all you really need to do is make sure that you're covering that plus at least an eighth of an inch either way around because that is your seam allowance. Now, for my purposes, especially because I find it a little awkward holding everything and trying to look and I make mine a little, I just make it bigger because, you know, this is a small project, so it's not like you're wasting a bunch of stuff. Okay, so all of our number twos, which we have four of them, are also going to be um, your silver background or whatever your background color is. So I'm just going to cut four of those pieces. Okay, and there's going to be a nice, cool little trick that I'm going to show you um, once we get a little bit further out on the pattern. Um, I personally find that it's really hard to do it right from the beginning. If you can do it right from the beginning, absolutely go for it. Um, but I personally prefer that we that I wait until I am out a little bit. But basically what you can do is the numbers that are opposite each other, you can sew them down like at the same time, not at the same, but you know what I mean, without going um, sew, trim, press, sew, trim, press, sew, trim, press, sew, trim, press. When you get further out, you can do sew, sew, trim, press, sew, sew, trim, press. You know what I mean? So you'll be doing two at a time instead of just one and it'll speed things up a little bit. Uh, but at the beginning, I'm going to be doing them one at a time. So let's head over to the sewing machine. We'll get this one down and then start putting um, our number twos on. Okay, guys, so I'm at the sewing machine and we are going to make sure that we have um, a couple of little adjustments that we do. And the first one is to adjust our stitch length. Now, I take mine down to 1.4 millimeters and uh, anything you can get close to that 1.5 would be fine um, what the reason why we do that is because we want to make sure that we are perforating this paper as finely as possible so that whenever we have to come back and remove the paper it just tears off very very easily and that's why we do that 
Um, now, if it's your, if you're like a beginner and you still feel that you're having to pull out your seam ripper a lot, you might not want to go down to 1.4. Um, you could probably go to 1.8 and be okay. Your paper will be a little bit more difficult to pull out, but not impossible. Um, and then that just helps you so that if you do have to use the seam ripper, you can actually see your stitches in order to be able to rip them out. Because um, sometimes when you have it so small, it's so tight that you just, it's almost impossible to get them out um, without ripping your fabric or something like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first piece. Now, if I were using a piece that had a print on it, I would wanna make sure that the print was facing this way because this piece is actually not going to be um, it, it, it is in its correct place as you put it down your number one is always should always be facing up this way because you're not going to be flipping it over um, to press it you know you're not going to be doing that so this is a solid color, which is really nice because it doesn't matter. Both sides are the same. Um, so you just want to hold that one right in the middle of where your number one is. We're going to go to the first number two. We're going to take our fabric and we're going to hold it at least a quarter of an inch above the line that we're going to sew on. Okay, so this line right here, right under the number two, is the line that we're going to sew. And we are definitely good um, where we are, so I'm going to do that now. Now, I use my hand dial to make sure that my needle is going to drop exactly where I want it to start. Because on these patterns here, we're going from exactly at the beginning of the line to exactly at the end of the line. There's no going over like there is in some other paper piecing. So, I'm going to, now that I know that it's where it needs to be, I'm going to, um, going to lower my presser foot, uh, or my foot, and I'm going to lower the needle. I'm going to make one stitch and then a back stitch. And then I'm going to stitch down that line. Back stitch. And you're done. And that will get longer, obviously, as we get further out. All right, so let's go back and get ready for this second number two. Okay, so we have just stitched this little line right here. And if you flip it over, this is the line that I just sewed. So I want to trim off anything excess beyond that point. So I'm going to turn my number two to the right I'm turning it to the right because I am right hand dom dominant and so I'm going to use my rotary cutter to trim this way. If you're left handed, you would want to turn it to the left and trim this way, okay? So you want to fold it right on that line that you just sewed. I use the rest of the paper to like keep it straight because you've stitched such a small piece that it's gonna tend to wanna shift if you don't um, do something like this to make sure you're in the right spot. Then I'm gonna take my add an eighth ruler and I'm gonna use the little lip inside to butt it straight up against what I just sewed as a seam allowance. And then I'm going to trim off beyond that. Okay, so now it looks like this, and basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over and I'm going to press this like that, and then we will add the second piece. Okay, so this line here is the one that I just sewed. I'm going directly opposite, um, and I'm going to sew 
right under number two. So I'm going to take my fabric. If this were a printed fabric, I would hold it pretty side to me and I would slip it to the back and I'm going to want to make sure that the top of that piece of fabric goes over the line that we're going to sew right here, number two, by at least a quarter, uh, sorry, an eighth of an inch. Um, but I probably will take it closer to a quarter just because we're going to trim anyway and it's better to be safe than sorry. So um, I usually just use my light source up there to um, make sure that I'm in the right place. Uh, anywhere that you can hold it up and see in the back. See, I have a very bright light that way. Sometimes you will use either sunlight or you can look up at some of the overhead lights that you have and that will work just as well. Okay, so here is the stitch that I just made. It's right here. So I want to take the number two and I'm going to turn it to the right. I'm going to fold the paper over. Again, I'm going to just make sure, like I just line it up down here so that I know that it's even. And then I use my add an eighth ruler and trim. Okay, so when I'm going to go over and do my pressing, the one thing I forgot to mention is this is the only time that I would ever suggest that when you flip over, use your finger to push the fabric up against that seam that you just sewed down. And the reason why you're doing that is because you want all of your um, seams to be very tight. And so if you see... That's how these get to lay so flat, is that I'm, I very much push right up against that seam and then I uh, press it very quickly so that I can get it right up against. And that's how you get those really sharp lines, okay? So I'm gonna go over and do that and then we're going to add our third piece. Okay, so we have sewed these two number two parts and we're gonna to go to the third number two, either one, it doesn't matter, and we're going to sew the line the directly under that number two. So I'm gonna take my piece, I'm gonna hold it in the back, and I'm going to make sure that the top of the piece of fabric is at least an eighth of an inch above the line that I'm going to sew. And it is there, so I'm going to sew here. Okay, so I have just stitched this line right here under number two. So I'm gonna turn that to the right, flip over the paper, and that is the, line, the seam that we just sewed. Now again, I'm gonna go and press that and then we'll add number four. Okay, so as you can see, we've got these three pieces sewed down. We're going to add the fourth one here, which means we're going to be sewing a seam allowance right here under the last number two that we haven't sewed under yet. And again, I just wanna make sure that the top of the fabric is at least one eighth of an inch above the line that we're going to sew. And it totally is. So I'm gonna sew that line. Okay, so this is the piece we just sewed on. This is the line right here. So I wanna turn that to the right, and fold the paper back. and I'm gonna go and press that piece right there.
Okay, so as you can see, I have those all pressed down. And we've just added those pieces onto number two. So now we're gonna turn it just a little bit and now we'll see that we have four threes. We have three, 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 three. Um, now that's gonna be the place for our first color, yay. Okay, so I'm gonna cut um, some pieces of the first fabric. Okay, so I'm I'm making my pieces about an inch and a half. That just gives me plenty of uh, fabric to work with, um, but it's not too big so that if, you know it's it's ginormous, right? Um, so basically, what I do is I'm looking at the line that I'm going to sew for number three, and I'm going to go over it just a maybe like a, a half maybe half an inch, maybe not. But I'm trying to be very generous right now um, because it's just easier to work with if you do that. And if you go about a half an inch that way as well, we're cutting about right there, okay? And so I'm gonna do that and make four pieces approximately. It doesn't have to be exact. I just sort of line them next to each other and cut a piece. Okay, so now I've got all four of these pieces, um, and I'm going to go over and we're going to add number three. Okay, so before I sew this piece on, a couple of questions um, that do tend to come up. One is um, what kind of thread I use. You want to use um, a pretty thin thread, so I use an 80 weight thread. And I also want to have like a smaller needle. Um, that's because you want to have, you don't want to like make too big of holes in because then it'll start tearing your paper off um, and when you don't want it to. And so you want to make um, very thin holes, but lots of holes. So that's what we're doing. So I would go for um, the smallest needle and an 80 weight thread. Okay, so I'm gonna take my piece of fabric and I'm gonna hold it pretty side facing me. And then I'm going to pull it to the back of the fabric. And now you'll see that you, these went like this. And these are these pieces that we're adding on now are gonna go um, sort of like crooked to that. What is that? Is that, <laughs> is that perpendicular? Is it, I don't know. Anyway, so. We're gonna, but we're lining up with number three, and I want to make sure that the top of the piece of fabric that I'm adding is at least an eighth of an inch higher than the line I'm going to sew on. And so, like I said, when you're at the beginning, you're kind of having to hold it a little awkwardly, which is why I try to make the paper as small as possible. Okay, and that's actually pretty good right there. All you have to do is really kind of just hold it back. If you pull it back, you can see sort of where it is. And if you know that I'm going to be sewing right here, then that's plenty of that's plenty of fabric. Um, so that means that this number three, I'm going to sew the line right underneath it. Okay, so I just stitched a line here, which is this line under number three. So I'm going to take my number three and I'm going to turn it to the right, fold the paper over, and now what I do is I'm now basing whether I'm folding over straight, uh, that it's lined up in some way with one of the lines that are going this way because, um, you know, it's, it's at an angle now. So you want to look at something that's going to be straight. And now I'm gonna go over and press that seam. Then I'll come back and we will add piece number two. Okay, so now uh, since I've sewed that piece there, this next one is gonna go directly across from it and it, I want it to sort of line up because that'll help me to know that it's, I'm sort of getting it in the middle. Um, now I just wanna make sure that this piece is at least a, 
uh, eighth of an inch higher than the line that I'm going to sew, which is the line right under number three right here. Once I get it where I want it there, I just want to make sure again that it's sort of lined up. Not perfection, doesn't have to be perfection. Okay, so I just stitched this line, which is this line here under number three. So I'm gonna take number three, turn it to the right, and fold over on the line that I just sewed, my seam allowance. I'm going to go press that seam and then we're going to add piece number three. Okay, so here is our piece number three and it's going to be added to the side just like this and I'm going to sew this line directly under the third number three and so I want to make sure that the fabric is at least an eighth of an inch higher than the line I am sewing on. Okay. And then I want to just sort of make sure that it's, you know, where I want it to be. You could fuss with it like all night, so I don't, I try not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay so here's the seam that I just stitched which is directly under that number three so I'm going to turn the number three to the right because I'm right-handed <laughs> and I'm lining up the edge of my uh, paper right with this line here and it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It just is to make it as straight as possible to the eyeball is fine, really. Nobody's going to come after it with, you know, a measuring stick or anything. Okay, so I'm going to go and press that piece and then we're going to add the last pink. Okay, so we are ready to add this last piece. I'm going to hold it pretty side to me. And I want to get it at least an eighth of an inch higher than the line under this last number three right here. Okay. It's so awkward in the beginning. I find it awkward anyway. I love whenever I get further out and then you can totally see where you are. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is the seam allowance we just stitched, which is the line under this number three. So I'm gonna turn that to my right and fold over. Didn't get all the way through there. There we go. So I'm gonna go and uh, press this seam and then I'll come back and we're going to go back to our background color. Okay, so I have those all pressed down. Um, and so at least now we have a little pop of color and now we're going to flip it over and we are going to be working on our number fours. 
right? So we've done one, two, and three. Now we're on number four, and we need four of those pieces as well. Um, now this one, I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, it's obviously way too big, but uh, cutting a piece off, you know, it, it wouldn't really be usable anyway. Um, so let me cut another piece. Okay, so I'm going to put this one to the side because that one is obviously bigger than we need. And I'm again going to go about, a, you know, half an inch past the line that we're going to sew on number four and about a half an inch past this way. And it doesn't have to be a full half. I'm just saying approximately. Um, so I'm going to cut it like right there. And then all I have to do is use this piece. Which way was it turned? <laughs> Um, to sort of do the, the other uh, two, since this is our third and this is our fourth. Okay, so now here are our pieces, and I'm going to take them over to the sewing machine, and we're going to sew these four number fours. Okay, so we are going to sew this line directly under the number four. You could pick any number four you want, it really doesn't matter. And as I said, at least an eighth of an inch above the seam allowance you're going to stitch. Okay, that looks about right. Okay, this is the seam allowance I just stitched. That's the line I sewed under number four. So I'm gonna turn that to the right. And now I can use the edge again, because we're not in a diagonal. I will go and press that and then we'll add our second number four. Okay, so now we are going to add our uh, number four, number two. <laughs> and I'm going to put it across from the one that I just sewed. Um, I just feel like it goes better if you do the opposite sides first and then the others. So I'm going to put this to the back at least an eighth of an inch above the line I'm going to sew. That looks good. Okay, I've just stitched this line here. So I'm gonna flip it over. That corresponds to the line right under this number four. So I'm gonna turn that to the right. And I'm gonna go over and press this seam and then we'll add piece number three. Okay, so I have those two pieces on. I'm going to add the third one. And I'm going to make sure that it's at least an eighth of an inch higher than this line that I'm going to sew under number four. Okay, this is the seam allowance I just stitched, which is under number four here. I'm gonna turn that to the right, fold the paper back. I'm going to press this seam and then we're going to add the fourth background piece. Okay, so I have the three pieces on and I'm going to add the fourth 
and it's the same process. I'm going to place this one at least an eighth of an inch higher than the number four that I'm going to be sewing under. Okay, and again, I am sewing the line right here under number four. Okay, so I just sewed that seam allowance, which is this line here under number four. So I'm gonna turn that to the right, flip it over, and then trim with my add an eighth ruler. I'm going to press that seam and then I'll come back and we'll add our second color. Okay, so there we go. We have our second row of the background. And I have to say, if you're thinking, gosh, that looks a little boring still, you're absolutely right. <laughs> so now we're going to put our next color on. And since we just did a number four, we're gonna add on four number fives. Okay, so let me cut that next piece of fabric. Okay. So now I'm going to, the, the five that we're gonna, or the line that we're gonna sew is under number five here. So it's that line. I wanna go, you know, approximately half an inch to this way and a half an inch to that way. And so that means I'm gonna cut about right there. I'm just gonna leave that one. Okay, so now we have these pieces. I'm going to um, take one over to the sewing machine. Okay, so here is our second row of color. And again, I'm going to be adding it uh, to number f all the number fives. And I'm gonna sew the seam allowance right under number five. So this line right under the number five going to hold it pretty side to me and I'm going to make sure that it is at least an eighth of an inch higher than the seam I'm sewing. And that looks pretty good. So here we go. Okay, so this is the seam I just sewed, which is under number five. I'm gonna take number five, turn it to the right, and then fold the paper where I just sewed. And I'm going to press that seam allowance and then attach piece number two. Okay, so I have pressed that first piece and now I'm adding the second one. I'm going to add it directly across. And I wanna make sure that it's at least an eighth of an inch higher than this line that we are about to sew under number five. It does get a lot easier as you get higher, guys. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, I have just sewed that seam right under number five. So I'm gonna turn it to the right, fold back on the seam I just sewed. and trim at an eighth of an inch. I'm 
going to press that piece and then we'll add number three. Okay, so I have have the two pieces on, I'm adding the third. I'm gonna hold the fabric pretty side to me and I'm going to place it at least an eighth of an inch above the seam allowance for number five. I think that's about right. Okay, so again, I'm going to sew that line right under number five. Okay, so I just sewed that seam allowance under number five. So I'm going to turn that to the right, turn my paper over where on the seam allowance. I am going to press that and come back to add, attach piece number four. Okay, so now we are at attaching the fourth piece, which obviously will go here. <laughs> so you're gonna hold it pretty side to you and you're gonna put it to the back and we're going to make sure it's at least an eighth of an inch higher than number five. And we're going to sew this line right here under number five. Okay, again, I have just stitched here. I'm going to flip it over. That's the seam I sewed right under number five. So I'm gonna turn it to the right, fold back my paper. and trim. I'm going to press that seam and then we're going to come back and add four pieces of background. Okay, so now we're starting to see a little bit more color. Um, I think things will get even better when we get to the next color and it's that pop of orange. Um, but first we're gonna have to add four pieces of the background. So I'm going to flip this over and this again was number five. So now we are going to add four number sixes. And so here's the line again under number six, it's just across. And I wanna make sure I'm about a half inch that way, half inch that way, um, just to have enough to be comfortable with. So about right there, oops, almost made it. Okay, so I just basically set it down and try to get them about the same. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so those are the four pieces. Let's go over to the sewing machine and start adding them on. Okay, so our first background piece, we are going to add to number six and we're going to be sewing this line directly under number six. So I wanna take my fabric and I'm going to make sure from the back that I'm at least an eighth of an inch higher than this line we are going to sew under number six. Okay good right there. Okay, so here is the seam I just sewed right under number six. I'm going to take number six, turn it to the right, fold my paper back where I just sewed that seam. I will press this seam and then we'll add piece number two. Okay, so we have piece number one sewn. We are adding number two directly across. And I'm looking at least 
an eighth of an inch higher than the seam allowance under number six. That looks good. Okay, so I have just sewed that seam directly under number six. I'm going to turn number six to the right because I'm right-handed and so I trim this way. If you were left-handed, you would turn it the other way and work like this, right? Okay. What did I just do? Oops, okay. It's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to press that seam and we'll add piece number three. Okay, so now we're ready to add the third piece. We're going to put it, a, uh, you know, perpendicular to these. <laughs> and I just want to, again, make sure that I'm at least an eighth of an inch higher than the line under number six. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so again, this line right here under number six. Okay, so I've just sewn that seam under number six. So we're going to take that number six and turn it to the right. Fold over our paper. And trim away the excess. I'm not pressing hard enough, I guess. <laughs> I don't often have that problem. Maybe I need to change my blade. I think I'll do that. Okay. So I am going to press that seam, change my blade, and then we'll add the fourth piece. <laughs> okay, so now we are adding the fourth and final piece in this round for the background. And we are again sewing this line directly under number six because we are adding the sixth piece of fabric on. Okay, we have our, I have just sewed this seam here directly under number six. So I'm going to take that number six, turn it to the right fold over on the seam I just sewed and trim off everything an eighth of an inch out. Okay, so I'm going to um, press this seam and then I'm going to come back and we're going to cut our pieces for the next round, which is a color. Okay, so, hopefully I didn't do anything. Okay, so the next color is an orange, so let me trim that. Okay, so we are going to flip this over. Oh, so we just did number six, right? So now we're going to be adding to number seven. And this piece, I'm probably just gonna leave like this because yeah, I'm not going to cut it. it, would be pointless to do that. But I'm going to uh, work on this line here under number seven. Well, it's, it looks like it's on top right now, but it's under. It's under. <laughs> and I'm going to go about a half an inch to either side. And then I can move this out of the way and cut them all about that same size.
Okay, so let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so now we're going to add the four pieces of number seven. And here is the fabric that we are using. I want to hold the fabric pretty side to me and I'm going to slip it to the back and I want to make sure that the top of the fabric is at least an eighth of an inch above this line under number seven that I'm going to stitch. Okay, so again, this line right here under number seven. Okay, so this is the line I just stitched directly under number seven. Take number seven, turn it to the right, and fold my paper back on that seam. and trim. I'm going to press this seam and then come back to add the second piece. Okay, so now we are adding piece number two. I'm going to hold the fabric pretty side to me and then put it to the back of our paper and at least an eighth of an inch above the line under number seven. And that looks pretty good. And again, we are sewing this line directly under number seven. Okay, again, I have just stitched this line here directly under number seven. So I'm taking that number seven and turning it to the right, folding back on that seam I just sewed, and trimming the excess. Now I'm sure you've noticed that every time I come back to the same place, I'm saying the same things, I'm doing the same things, and it's all just like sort of in a clockwise motion, except that we're kind of going across and then across, but it's like we're kind of working in this circle, right? And it's all very repetitive. So that's what makes this so easy. Um, I just wanted to point that out real quick, and now I'm gonna go press this seam and then we'll add piece number three. Okay, so we have these first two pieces sewn down. We are adding the third. I'm going to hold the fabric pretty side to me and then slide it to the back. I'm looking to go at least an eighth of an inch above that seam allowance on number seven that I'm sewing. And let's see. That looks pretty good right there. And again, I am sewing this line directly under number seven. Okay, I just sewed this seam here, which is the line under number seven. Take number seven, turn it to the right, and fold down on that seam. Trim the excess. I will press that seam and then we'll add piece number four. Okay, we have put the first three pieces on. We're looking at the last one, the fourth one. I'm going to hold the fabric pretty side to me, put it to the back of the fabric or back of our, uh, our project. And I want to go at least an eighth of an inch above the line under number seven. And that's pretty good right there. Again, I'm going to sew this line directly under number seven.
Okay, so here's the seam I just sewed directly under number seven. I'm going to take number seven, turn it to the right, fold over my paper, and trim the excess beyond an eighth of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna go over and I'm going to press this last piece. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, I'm not gonna film every single row um, because that would just be too tedious, too, too much. <laughs> so I'm going to press that and then I'm going to do um, a few more rounds until I get to a point where we have like about three or four more rounds to go and then I'll come back and I will finish those with you and I'll also at that time show you the trick of being able to do two sides at once now I probably could have been doing it here but for the first part I just wanted to make sure I was getting across the repetition of everything that we do that makes it very methodical and just well, it's what I love about it. So I'm going to um, let you go for now and I'll be back when I'm a bit further along. Okay guys, so we are back and here I am, or this is how far I've gone um, with the piece. And here is the finished one that Giuseppe did. And so here's what I came to realize because I also, um, before I did this one, I went ahead and I did the one with canning day and I realized that I was not taking into consideration that there would be more going out this way and getting smaller sort of like his did here and so without thinking that through I kind of just left it this way um, but if we want to do this one in the same way that he did then we have to sort of think about things so um, so here's what I was thinking. We already have our silver out to this point. I've got two more colors that I need to put in um, at a minimum, okay? And so if I flip this over, and I know that I have already sewn um, my silver all the way to the line that's under the 18, the soonest that I can stop my silver is I at least need an 18 because I want to have enough that I'm making a border okay and that's that's a personal thing for me because I want to be able to attach it to other stuff depending on what I'm going to want to make with it so if I'm looking at this and I'm going to take my pen um so I know that I have to go all the way to 20 for sure Okay, now if I do that, like if I continue this line, that means that I am going to have to, making sure I'm in the right spot, I'm going to have to come to the corner of 27 with my colors. Okay, so I'm going to continue that line all the way around. And I'm making sure that I'm using um, a regular pin. How did I get that? All right, so I'm going there to here, and then I'm gonna continue this line to the 27 there. You see how I'm making, it's, it's making a square? Now they have theirs out to the next line, but I'm gonna, stop it as soon as I can because I was trying to keep just the colors that I had, the 10 colors I chose, but I think I'm going to have to do a little bit more. We're going to um, do that and I'll make a decision on what I'm going to do there. Um, okay, so I'm just going to continue the same thing. Doesn't have to be perfect, just so that you know where to stop. It's a little wobbly right now because of uh, me having all that fabric underneath, so it makes it a little wobbly. Okay, just so we get the gist. 
I was hoping I had a different color pen, but I don't. So, um, again, we're going to be going just like this. This is our last stitch line all the way around. And basically, um, you know, that's going to be your silver. That's going to close it up like this. Oops. Okay. Okay. So knowing that what I'm going to do now is the last thing that I stitched down was my silver. So I am going to start sewing the pieces that I'm going to need in this color area before I finish up with the last silver that I need. Okay. So my next color after this blue is um, the purple with the design and I've got some of that right here so I'm going to flip it over and now that I'm coming like toward the end I'm just going to start making them go to the edges because I want to make sure that I'm covering everything up before that until you know as you're sewing this part you really don't need to do more than like this much of a piece do you know what I mean like just do it a little bit beyond because your silver was covering it up. But right now, we're going to be doing a few colors and then a last silver. So, that being said, the next thing I'm going to be sewing is the line under number 19, which is right here. So I'm gonna go all the way across and I'm gonna put my point here and then my point there and just give it a, a cut. And, oh look, that's practically perfect. <laughs> and I'll do this one. And the last one. All right, so let's go sew this down and I'll show you that neat trick. Okay, so here we are and I am going to be stitching the line that is directly under number 19 right here and so I am going to take my fabric I'm gonna hold it pretty side to me and I just want to make sure that I am at least I'm sure you guys are repeating it as I say it every time now because it's so um, so much a part of what we're saying here at least an eighth of an inch above the line that we're going to sew. Um, okay, and that looks pretty good. I could probably pull it down just a tad and that'd be fine. And so here we go, sewing that line. And then I'll show you that trick um, right after we get this one down. Okay, so now that we have one side stitched down, what I'm going to do, I don't know why, but I'm like one of those people who likes to trim all of my pieces. I know you see me do that all the time. Um, so you see how far apart they are. So now I can add the piece on this side and it will not get in the way of this. And so I don't have to get up um, in the middle and actually, um, for some of these in here, because I was only going, you know, maybe a half an inch to either side, um, a little bit less, you know, maybe, then I was, I was actually doing like all four. I would sew down all four and then I would head over and I would do all my trimming and then all my pressing. Um, but once I start getting to these longer pieces, I don't do that because as you see, once we have that side down, um, when we go to do this side, if we did it while these were still laying down, we would cover it up. You wouldn't be able to do your trimming. So I'm only doing uh, one side and then the other. So let's go ahead and do this side.
Okay, so here are the two pieces that I have just stitched down on um, the seam allowance. So I'm going to uh, flip it over, or how did I do that? Doop. <laughs> um, under number 19 is the one that I just stitched, um, or one, the first one that I stitched. So I'm gonna take the 19, I'm going to turn it to the right, fold that over at the seam line, and then trim everything an eighth of an inch beyond that point. And then I'm just going to take the other side, and there it is, the number 19, that's what I just sewed right here. I'm going to flip it over and trim that one an eighth of an inch beyond. And now I'm gonna go and I'm going to press these two pieces and then we'll head over to the sewing machine to add the other two. Okay, so here I have pressed those two down and now I'm going to add the other two. So I'm going to be sewing this line, which is directly under number 19 again, because we have four 19s. And um, yep, so let's get that ready. Okay, so here are the two seam allowances I just sewed. And it's that line directly under number 19. So I'm gonna take my 19 and turn it to the right. And I'm going to trim everything an eighth of an inch away. And then here's the second one, again, number 19 right here. So I'm gonna turn that to the right. And trim an eighth of an inch beyond that. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm going to press these two and then we're gonna come back and get our colors ready for the next row. Okay, so this is gonna be really weird, but now we're adding another piece of, or we're adding the next color is what we're doing. And I'm going to um, just cut them about the same just because they're kind of going in the same place. So um, like I said, I kind of did the other one wrong. So I don't know if I'm, what's gonna go on with this. Oh, that's pretty good, that's okay. Um, need another little piece, okay. And then I'm just going to match that a little bit. Okay, so let's take this over and attach these next pieces. And we're going to be skipping um, going with the silver and we're going to keep ex instead extending. So we're gonna be sewing under number 21 here. Okay, so here we are with our pieces that we're ready to stitch. And this is gonna be a little strange because we're so used to doing um, colors and then the silver and then the colors and now we're gonna do two colors at the same time or back to back anyway. Why do I do this? I get so like, okay. Um, <laughs> so we're going again in this same space. So it's gonna be a little bit di more difficult to see through um, in my opinion, but I have this big old bright light, so I'll be fine. Um, but all you need to make sure you're doing is um, this line under number 21 is the seam allowance that we are going to sew. And also keep in mind that what we are doing is, this is the reason why we drew our box, right? Is it'll tell us that now we have a different place to start stitching. Right, so we, we only need to stitch inside this box here. So we're gonna start there and end here instead of extending beyond like we normally would if we were still going around in a circle. Okay.
Okay, so here are the two pieces we have just sewed on and I'm going to flip it over. We have just sewed under number 21, so I'm gonna take 21, turn it to the right, fold back on my seam line, and trim everything an eighth of an inch beyond that point. And again on the other side, I'm going to flip it over, take number 21, turn it to the right. I got everything flipping around under here. <laughs> and then fold back my paper and trim everything an eighth of an inch beyond that spot. Okay, so now I'm going to just press these pieces and then go add the other two. Okay, so now we're going to sew on these two seams here. And if I turn it over, I'm still looking at number 21. And I'm going to stitch the line under number 21, starting here and ending here. Okay. Okay, so these are the two pieces we've just um, sewed down. And we sewed this line directly under number 21. So we'll take number 21, turn it to the right, and then we will trim it off an eighth of an inch. And then we're gonna do the other side. Number 21 turns to the right. Ooh, and we trim down. Okay, so I'm gonna go and press those pieces and then we are going to come back and make a decision about the colors that we're going to do beyond that this point. Okay guys, so I am back and I know that I need to have three more colors um, beyond here, right? And so I'm kind of doing a little bit of testing to see what I might wanna do. Um, one option is to start from here, which is the last piece of fabric that we have attached. And then I can just go back that way, which would bring, make it um, the indigo, the blue, and the green. Or I could go back to the beginning and do pink, orange, yellow. I just made a decision to skip one of the pinks just because um, to make it a little more dramatic. Um, and honestly, I'm kind of leaning toward this one. I'm thinking this is just a little too jarring um, to pop straight back to here. And I'm kind of liking how this goes also um, because the last three pieces are also going to be getting smaller again. So I think I kind of like this best. And I'm just going to go with that. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so that means I need to have um, more of this purple cut. I guess that's that's probably good enough, um, that size, but I need more. Okay, so I'll just cut four pieces like that. Okay, so now I'm going to take these pieces and we're going to head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so here we are back at the sewing machine <laughs> and we are going to add um, to these four pieces. And this next piece is going to be sewn with a seam allowance right here under the number 23. So I'm going to take my fabric 
pretty side toward me and I'm going to put it um, to the back of my project and I want to make sure it's lined up at least an eighth of an inch higher than the line under number 23. Okay, these are the two pieces I just added on. So I will flip this over. I just sewed under number 23. So number 23, I'm going to turn to the right, fold over, and I'm going to trim everything beyond one eighth of an inch. And we also did this piece. I will go press these pieces and we'll add the last two. Okay, so I have ironed those down or pressed those down and now we have the other two that we're going to put on. And again, we are going to stitch under number 23 from right here to right here. You won't complete the line. You're gonna go to this square that we drew, okay? Okay, so I've just stitched these two pieces down. I stitched right under number 23, so I'm gonna turn number 23 to the right, fold back the paper. I'm trying to make sure it's not all lumpy, because down on the ends here, it's not so down, so um, it's, you know, the it's moving around. <laughs> Okay, and then this one. Okay, I will go and press these two pieces and then we will be adding our next color. Okay, so now we are ready to add our next color, which is the blue, I'm pretty sure, yes. Um, so I am going to cut it that same size. And I'll need to get some more, hold on. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna take these pieces and we are going to head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so here we are ready to add these pieces on. Um, so now if we look on the other side, we are going to be sewing the line directly under number 25. We're gonna start right here where our mark went for the uh, square that we drew inside. And then we're gonna sew only to this side um, where the square is as well. So this little line right there. Okay.
Okay, I've just stitched down those two pieces. If I flip this over, <laughs> all these pieces are like, like full flopping around. <laughs> okay, so I just <laughs> sewed under number 25. So I'm gonna take 25, turn it to the right, and I'm going to fold back and trim. And I also sewed this part down, so I will flip that one over. And number 25 to the right. And trim. Okay, I'm gonna go and press those pieces and then we're going to attach the other two. Okay, we've just added those on. Now we're gonna add the other two. Okay, so those are the two pieces um, that we just sewed down going to flip this over and our number 25 we're going to move to the right fold back and trim and again with this piece Okay, so I'm going to go press these pieces, come back, and we will um, prepare for our last color. Okay, so we're ready to add the last color on the end. Thank goodness, because this is so messy, it's making me crazy. Um, <laughs> but this is the last one, and then we'll be able to add our silver, which will clean all of that up. Um, okay, so just going to cut this piece. I need more. Okay. Oh no, Mr. Bill. Okay. So I'm gonna take these over to the sewing machine and let's get those sewn down. Okay, so here we are. We're going to be adding the last four pieces of color and we're going to add them to the end of here of all of these other colors. And we are going to sew that little tiny seam allowance, <laughs> which is pretty much the same size as this number two, to be honest. Um, and we're gonna start right there and end right here and that will give us that little bitty point of the green. Okay, these are the two pieces that we just stitched down. And we made this stitch right under number 27. So I'm going to take turn 27, turn it to the right. We'll flip this over. It looks a little crooked actually. Kind of do that. And trim.
Did I get that? Oh, I did. Good. And the other side. Turn it to the right. And trim. Okay, I'm gonna go press these pieces and we're putting those last two greens on. Okay, we have put the first two greens and now we're going to add the second two. Okay, these are the two pieces I just added on, so I'm going to flip this over. I stitched it under number 27, so I'm going to turn 27 to the right, and I'm going to fold this over and trim. And I also did this side. So I'm going to flip it over, turn 27 to the right, and trim. Okay, I'm gonna go and press those and then thank goodness we are putting on those silver pieces. Okay, so now we are ready to add our last pieces on and these are going to be our silver pieces. Um, and I I tend to um, probably go overkill on this kind of stuff. I probably don't, I probably didn't even need to have all of these. It just makes me feel like better somehow that I'm doing something that feels right to me. <laughs> um, this is the first time I'm actually doing this block where I think I'm doing it the correct way. So, um, you know, I may be doing, you know, more than I really need to. I'm really not sure. But what I'm going to do now is probably just as crazy. Um, I'll probably, you know, who knows, but I'm going to like make sure that I have a pretty big piece of this as well. And so I'm probably going to just cut like this much and use that size piece because I know that, um, you know, I'm going to use it for my border as well. So I just want to make sure I have enough. I would prefer to have too much than not enough. I mean, really, um, to me, that would be much, much worse. I've had that happen before and it's not fun. I can just tell you that. Okay, so now I'm going to take these pieces over to the sewing machine. We're going to start adding those on. Okay, so here we are ready to add on our silver pieces, and we are going to be putting them here. So if I flip that over, we can see that we are adding it um, right here at number 20. Did I just mess all of that up? Okay, I'm just going to give it a go. <laughs> the way that I'm going to do it is at this point I have um, pieces that are sewn up to this line here. And is that is that on? Oh, okay. Okay, crisis averted. I don't know why, but I thought I was feeling a stitch here under number 20. <laughs> I am not feeling a stitch under 20. Okay, so I'm going to sew this line directly under number 20 and I'm going to make this whole square. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to go all the way down to this darkened end um, 
of number 27 where I've marked this dark line. So I'm making this whole square and that's going to be how these silver pieces finish up. Um, okay, so that's where I'm stitching. So I'm going to take my silver fabric and I'm going to hold it to the back of the project and I want to make sure that it's at least an eighth of an inch higher than the line under number 20. Okay, so I've just stitched those two pieces down. I'm going to flip it over. And we just sewed under number 20, so I'm gonna turn number 20 to the right. Fold it over at the seam I just sewed. And I'm going to trim the excess. and the other side. Okay, I'm gonna go press these two pieces and then we have our final two silver pieces to attach. Okay, it's looking better already. <laughs> now I'm going to sew the pieces here and here. And again, I'm going to stitch this darkened line that I drew under number 20 and I'm gonna go right to the edges where I drew that square. Okay, those are the last two pieces I just stitched down, so I'm going to flip this over, take my number 20 and turn it to the right, and trim. And the other side. Okay, I'm gonna go and press those and I'll be right back with the finished product. <laughs> okay guys, here it is. Um, here's the one that I just finished and actually I think that um, going back right away to the this you know that direction, I think that was the perfect choice. Um, I really do think that if we had if I had gone back to pink, orange, yellow, it would have just been too jarring at the end here and I really like how that turned out. Um, yeah, what do you think? Um, and I have actually, I still really like this one with it being like this. Um, and it's like that mainly because I just didn't realize what was going on. I didn't, I wasn't paying enough attention to how this was ending and I wasn't paying enough attention to the actual pattern. So whether or not, um, the way I ended up doing this one, which, you know, making it square, whether that's the way it was supposed to be done or not, I really don't know, but it came out the way it's supposed to here. And so I'm fine with that. Um, I can't wait to see all the ones that you guys have made and 
have a great time sewing them, guys. I think that these are absolutely wonderful. Uh, Juicy Juice, Giuseppe, I think you do, did a great job writing these patterns. I know that you don't need to hear that from me. Um, but I just, I just love them personally. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.